We're at the Ohio State Reformatory in Mansfield, Ohio. After opening its doors in 1896, this prison became notorious for housing some of the most vicious inmates in the nation. Tonight, we give two teams the opportunity to battle it out for bragging rights in one of the most haunted prisons in the country. Rack up, let's go. What the oh, f that? Seriously. This is Paranormal Challenge, Ohio State Reformatory. Oh, wow. I'm just so happy. One night. One haunted location. One winner. For the ultimate in dragon rights. Out of all the prisons that I've ever investigated, this place is the most haunted. Zach Bacons, the Paranormal Challenge Chairman, is also lead investigator and co-founder of the highly respected and award-winning Ghost Adventures crew. He has completed hundreds of investigations, working with the world's renowned paranormal researchers and scientists. It looks like we have a case of David and Goliath. You know, you've got eerie paranormal, these two big old macho guys. Then you have the other team, Steel Town Paranormal. You've got two women on that team. Every woman that's ever been in here has had her head grabbed, has been pushed, has been scratched. You've got to be careful in that respect. Let's see if they can handle it. From Pennsylvania, Steel Town Paranormal. My name is Melanie Jerish, and I'm the lead investigator. I grew up in a haunted house, and I've always been interested in it. Uh, my name is Chris Norris. We want to be relevant to the paranormal research. When we're ghosts, we'll have contributed something lasting to the field. My name is Carrie Mitchell, and I'm the second investigator. I think being two women on our team, it's going to help us bring out the spirits here. We're here to win. Just really excited to get the chance to prove that we're the better team. It's a little different atmosphere, because usually we're out to hunt the ghosts, but tonight it's, we're out to beat the other team, too. From Ohio, Erie Paranormal. I'm Darcy Henley with Erie Paranormal. She's our rock that we lean on. I am the case manager, but as far as lead investigator, it's always up to these guys. Gary Henley from Erie Paranormal. We got our name because we're in the area, but it's spelled Erie like loop. Ben and myself both work in uh, corrections. I, I can't say that it wouldn't give us an upper hand, just the feeling of what it's like to be in here. But it's important for us to validate that, look, we are good investigators. We capture amazing evidence. Well, I have mean, no disrespect to the other team, but they're going down. We're taking home the belt. <laughs> All right, right now we are in the central guards room at Ohio State Reformatory. Teams, how you doing? Erie Paranormal? Steel Town Paranormal? You guys ready? We're ready. You guys ready to go head to head? Ready. And compete for the bragging rights of Paranormal Challenge? Who's gonna win? We are we gonna win. We'll see, we'll see. We'll, we'll make the judgment on that. This is Mike Middleton. I've investigated with this guy. He's gonna take you guys around show you all the areas that you're going to be investigating. Listen very, very closely to every single detail Mike tells you. For nearly a hundred years, America's most dangerous convicts called the Ohio State Reformatory home. Since its opening in the late 1800s, violence and death have plagued this sprawling Gothic castle where murder, suicide, and bloody escape attempts took the lives of hundreds of people. Now abandoned, experts believe the unavenged spirits of the dead remain locked behind the reformatory's decaying stone walls. To either side of us is the east and west cell blocks where some of the hardest criminals in the country were sent. It's easy to forget that these were real people real men, fathers, sons, grandfathers. Are you ready to see the cell blocks? Let's go. We're in the West Shower. This is where the prisoners of the West Cell Block got to take their one shower a week. Life inside these walls for some prisoners was unbearable. Between the living conditions, the fear, the constant violence, 
suicide was a real option. And that became reality right here when an inmate took a towel and hung himself. To be standing underneath a pipe that's bent from the weight of the man, I immediately had chills. Here on the west cell block at cell number 36, or better known to the staff here as Thomas's cell, Thomas was an inmate in there who never got visited by his family. He was in great despair, and that turned into insanity. He would bang his head over and over again. And he hung himself off the top railing of his bunk bed. While teams were in the west attic, the primary use for this was an overflow for inmates when the prison was at capacity. We've talked to former inmates who have told us that when it was winter outside, it could be 30 degrees colder in here. When it was summer, it could be 25 to 35 degrees warmer in here. We'd have that many inmates in one room. It's sort of like a big free-for-all up there. It was much easier to access each other to harm each other. We're in solitary confinement. This was really where the worst of the worst ended up. Can you imagine this being your life? 23 hours a day. Some men were in solitary eight months to a year. Okay? It drove some men insane. On October 6th in 1932, prisoner Merrill Chandler took an iron bar and murdered prison guard Frank Hank right where you're standing. Oh my gosh. I've told you a little bit about the history of the Ohio State Reformatory. Now I'd like to introduce you to someone who's lived some history. DJ Fly. You guys are in my house now. When I first came here, I met DJ Fly, an inmate that spent time here, that saw murder that witnessed suicides. I was on uh, 4 Northeast in cell 14, and a fellow next door to me, his name was Lockhart, and he was totally bonkers. One night, he was able to get a hold of some lighter fluid, and, and then he started screaming. Lockhart uh, burned himself up. The smoke was coming out. The fire was coming out. And I'm screaming my, my lungs out. I was trying to get some... It was a grisly sight when they drug him out. Parts of his body had been cooked, was just laying on the range. The stench was terrible. And that really drives it home, you know, when you hear somebody that actually experienced something that close. I hope that when you leave here, that you'll remember Lockhart. He's still here. There's a whole bunch of people like him that will never get out of here. This is for real. With the competition set to begin, Zach gets each team geared up with the most advanced paranormal detection equipment for tonight's challenge. What's up? You guys know that this isn't a stuffed animal factory full of puppy dogs and ice cream, right? Right. Oh, yeah. This is the most haunted prison I've ever investigated. On this table before you are the same exact pieces of equipment that each of you are going to be outfitted with. Two digital recorders, two night vision camcorders, one full spectrum camcorder, one full spectrum still camera, a thermal imaging camera, and also we can't forget the melmeter that measures for electromagnetic energy and temperature. Guys, I know you're tough, but these spirits are tougher. Suit up, wait for my signal, and we'll see you soon. Teams will conduct their investigations simultaneously. Erie Paranormal will begin in Zone 1, which is in the west cell block. And Steeltown Paranormal will start off in Zone 2, which is east cell block and solitary confinement. Strict time constraints are designed to push each team to the limit. They will only be given two hours to complete part one of the investigation, then switch locations and continue investigating for two more hours in part two. Teams will be judged on overall teamwork, technological proficiency, historical knowledge, and audio and visual evidence they are ultimately able to capture. 
Tonight's judges are three of the country's most notable paranormal experts. Dave Schrader, acclaimed paranormal conference lecturer, co-author of The Other Side, a teen's guide to ghost hunting, and the host of the popular talk show, Darkness Radio. Mark Constantino is a certified parapsychologist, an EVP conference lecturer and trainer, and has captured over 10,000 EVPs. And Debbie Constantino is an International Paranormal Acknowledgement Award winner for Best EVP Researcher, a paranormal conference lecturer, and has captured thousands of EVPs. All right, right now we're in Nerve Center. The competition is just getting ready to start. Over here, Erie Paranormal, they're going to be starting out in the west cell block. Mark, you're going to be watching them, all right? Debbie has got Steel Town Paranormal. They're going to be starting off in the east cell block. Steel Town Paranormal, are you three ready? We're ready. Yes. Erie Paranormal, are you guys ready? Oh, yeah. The portals are open. Let the challenge begin. Two hours just started, judges. Okay, 2108. 908. Who's down here? Who's down here rattling the cage? You want to lose your privileges? Can you make a noise in the There was somebody in that room, you guys. This is it. The investigation just begun. Both of these groups are apparently marking out their strategies. Hey, Dave, tell us about the operation we got going on. Well, we've got both teams spread out throughout the prison. We're going to be following along both teams as they investigate the east and west side of the prisons this evening. We've got robotic cameras set up throughout the location. We also have a cameraman and a technician that are following each team so that we know what's in every location of the prison. All right, I got, I got the millimeter underneath where he hung himself. I'm just going to say that I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you had to live. Oh, you guys, you guys, you guys. Wow. Are you trying to communicate with us? Yes, do we have a digital voice recorder on? Yes, yeah, right over there. It's not See the how intelligent you are. Can you stop it? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I turned off the voice recorder. Okay. Thomas, man, I wasn't visit. recording. Let's go visit Tom. What? I forgot to push record. Man. Are you serious? Yeah, he forgot to hit record, him. so he wasn't oh. even recording, which is not uh, so the best he, thing. So he forgot to hit record, Mark. Yeah. Will you mark that down as a bad yeah, one for I already technology? Did. I already did. Thirteen. This is thirteen. Yep. So this was his cell right here. This was Lockhart's cell. Yeah. So right now, Steel Town Paranormal is in the east cell block. They're trying to communicate the spirit of Lockhart. Lockhart set himself on fire and committed suicide. Whoa. What? I don't know. I thought I heard someone walking behind. Lockhart, are you here? Is this where you took the easy way out? Did you hear that? Yeah, a little bang. Where'd you get the matches to light yourself on fire? I mean, I'm way back. You standing outside of your cell? Why don't you come on in this cell with me? Did you hear that? It was like a moan like or a, something. Like uh, a Like that? It sounded like a moan. Yeah. Yeah, were you on the top bunk when this happened? When you decided to end your life? And that's where you are stuck? Ooh, right there. Yep. It's like going nuts. Deb, what have you liked so far with Steel Town? I like the way they work as a team. Just a personal thing, they kind of interact a little better without so much provoking. Who's over here? Who's down there?
up here below us. Hurry up, I just heard a door close. Let's go. I'm coming. We just shut their cell door. You don't touch your cell doors till we tell you. All right, just got... Whoa, whoa. Sweet. I had a light orb come out, swing out over the side, and go back into a cell. Set off these lights. Come on, why don't you ask to have the to come out here and push one of us or do something? That was something. What big. the f was that? Seriously. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Nobody kicked anything. You... All right, we're seriously pissed on it. We're staying here for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. It sounded like something metal. Here, look. There's a key. <gasps> You're kidding. There's a key. But that's that didn't sound like it, did it? Yes, it most certainly was. Let's see if this is what it was. Yeah, that was it. That was it. Easy. That, that's pretty wild. That is nuts. So they're trying to debunk, is this the sound we heard? And they began uh, throwing the key to make the same sound, and they're confirming that it is, in fact, the key that they heard bouncing mm -hmm. across so the So they did hear this key bouncing right. along mm -hmm. the floor. And where this key came from, I don't know. Really? Right. Where you at, Thomas? Come to visit you, buddy. Holy I just got chills when I walked in here, man. God, it's so dark. Wow. Did you hear that? Yeah. What the f was that? Thomas, is that you with us? Temperature change. I've got chills like crazy, you guys. Temperature's going up right now. Man, you guys, I've got right chills so bad my eyes are watering. It's heavy in here. It's very heavy right now. She's personally being affected now. These spirits, they can use their energy. You can feel their emotions. And they like when that happens, because I think that's closure for them. Why did you kill yourself? Something just touch you? If you want her to stay, light the light up. Just like you did. All you gotta do... Okay. What is this? Is that you, Thomas? Keep touching my stuff. He keeps tugging at my back pocket. What the is that? I feel sick to my stomach. You guys are a bunch of. Something just sounded like it got thrown, like a pebble or something. That's what it sounded like yeah, to me. Yeah, I heard that too. Okay. Let's go audio up on Steel Town. All right, you got our attention. Let's see some more. Or do you have something else you can throw our direction? Come on, make some kind of noise. What was that? Did you hear that? Was that over there? Yes. Sounds like a, a rock was thrown or something. Did you just throw that rock? Seriously, that was something big, too. I mean... Who's in here? Every single team has the option to go off by themselves in a point-of-view camera. And uh, over here on the west cell block, Erie Paranormal has just chose Ben to go by himself in the attic. It is an absolute terrifying place. I'm all by myself. And guess what? I'm a prison guard. How often do you guys get to communicate with a prison guard with an attitude like mine? There you go, Ben. But if you don't start talking, I'm going to start cussing. Yes. I'm going to start being mean. You got a guy that works in the Department of Corrections, and he's really getting into it. I love seeing this. Give me something. Rack up. Let's go. Out your bumps. Guys are a bunch of. Sometimes when you're put off by yourself in an area that's full of negative energy, 
you may not even know it that you're actually being a host of that negative energy. Make some noise. You guys are all. All right, Thomas, if you're in here, can you can you touch one of us? That was a cell door slamming. I guess. Look, look, every time I try to leave in here. Awesome. Thomas, do you want me to stay? Was that, was that a trick to get Gary out of here? So Dave, just in a couple minutes, I'm going to alarm the siren. At that point, you and I need to go greet the teams. Right. Thomas, are you in here with me? Man, I feel sick to my stomach. Is that the riot call? Part one is complete. Hopefully we got something on the recorders. Hey guys, hey girls, this is a debriefing. Dave, my chief judge, is gonna let you know how you're doing thus far. Dave? Eerie paranormal, pay attention to your equipment, know what you're doing with it. To forget to start your recorder, your video recorder, not pushing the on button, that's tantamount to treason. Coming over to Steel Town, and you're in a building where there was so much activity, and you guys are very passive. You came around in the last half an hour of the first part of the investigation, so we're hoping you pick up the energy level a little, little bit. Before you head out and start investigating in part two, we want to show you something. We're going to bring in Billy Tolley, our Paranormal Challenge audio visual tech. Teams, Billy is going to present each of you a piece of evidence where you're headed next. Steel Town Paranormal, you three are headed to the West Cell Block. Before you head there for part two of your investigation, we have a piece of evidence we want to show you. It was the man, It was the man, Can you hear that? It says, I want to see Mark. Moments after that EVP was captured, this is what happened to Mark Constantino that was right next to us. He didn't hear this EVP until after this happened. Maybe you want to go try and make contact with that spirit to see if you can get this on your forehead. Eerie Paranormal, you guys are headed to the east cell block. Listen to this. They made it out to saying, we're going to fight you. That's pretty dark, isn't it? Dark. Yeah, make sure you try and communicate with that spirit when you're in solitary. In addition to the evidence that Zach has presented, they are both given a new piece of equipment, a mad pod, which scans the natural geomagnetic field, detecting anomalies created when a spirit is present. Go gear up, wait for our signal. We'll be watching. Teams will now switch locations and continue investigating for two more hours. Erie Paranormal will now take the East Cell Block, and Steel Town Paranormal will now explore the West Cell Block. Let's check out the shower. Okay. Is anybody taking a shower in here? A couple ladies are coming in. Better cover yourself up. Tell us what year you hung yourself. Okay, what was that? What is that? Oh, that's something up top. <gasps> Steel Town Paranormal, they're in the uh, west cell block. Let's go audio up, please, on Steel Town. Tell us what year you hung yourself. Okay, what was that? Audio up. We could hear that here at Nerve Center. We want to set the static camera up at the opposite end down here. Shooting this way? Yeah. I'll go down and set it up. Okay. It feels like there's somebody back here with me. You guys. There it was again, right? There it was. That was down there. What the f was that? All right. Good. Did anyone start this camera? 
Yeah. You did? Yeah. Was it powered off? It was off. That powered down. It powered itself down. Oh my god, what was that? Don't run. <laughs> Keep making noise. Keep making noise. In there was somebody in that room, you guys. I saw it too. There was somebody in this room. I saw it too. That's the corner of my eye. I thought, oh my God. She saw somebody standing in the cell. I've seen this before here. It's very common. You scared my lady. No, my lady. Somebody here with me? Are you setting it off? Are you sending us Morse code signals? That's what it sounds like, right? I guess it is. What the f is that? Something just... You guys, this is creeping me out. Something just touched my leg. You guys, this... I've got chills, and I am creeped out, like, major. Ooh. This is where it all started on the West South Block. What was that? Is that that See? noise again? Where do you think that came from? It's probably Thomas. Oh. Ooh, something's uh, going on in there. Getting something here. I'm recording on the thermal here, too. Now it's gone. OK. So All right, is there somebody in here trying to get our attention? This is my house now. You're going to be my What do you think about that? Whoa. What is that? Oh, that's something up top. Something I mean, walking. seriously, I hear footsteps. There's like somebody walking. You up there? Come on out to the railing. Why don't you jump? You guys want to do solo? Yeah. All right, I'll do it if you want me to do it. I'm sure. Yeah. After all that? All right, you guys, I'm getting ready to hang out in here with you, unfortunately by myself, uh, for what stupid reason I decided to agree to that. You guys hear me screaming, you come running. So it looks like Eerie Paranormal has decided to leave Darcy alone by herself in solitary confinement. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, I can do this, I can do this. All right, I'm gonna go down here where Frank was murdered. So, so Frank, Frank Hanger, are you here with me? by herself in solitary confinement in complete darkness. Oh, you guys! Why do you up? Holy <laughs> She just heard a cell door slam? It sounded like a bang, yep. You gotta remember, this is hard to do. This is a very hard Wait, thing to do. You? It may look easy while you're at home on your couch looking and it looks all lit up. She's brave for staying in there, Mark. Yeah, she's, she's got guts. Okay, is anybody, can somebody hear me? Come get me, come get me, come get me. I'm ready to take this off. Guys! Yeah. Man, I can't take any more down there. I can't do any more down there. Well, what's up? That's creepy. Guys, I gotta sound the siren. That's it. That's it, so we gotta go. We gotta go. 
All right, teams, investigations are over. Did you have a recorder? The black one? No. How did you lose the recorder? I sat it down in there. Gary said you had it in your hand. I know. So where should But I think it? I set it down somewhere. Paranormal challenge first. We lost some equipment. Now that both investigations are officially completed, teams must lock up all of their materials and evacuate the premises until morning. I think the fact that um, there's a missing digital voice recorder right now is kind of bothering all of us. We have had a lot of personal experiences. Um, hopefully we captured a lot of that on our equipment. We'll just have to wait and see. The teams return the next morning to review their evidence. They'll present the four most compelling pieces captured during the competition, two audio and two visual. We're very picky about what we claim as evidence. We truly believe that we've put it through the test. It's a little nerve-wracking, but I feel like we rose to the task, and I'm really confident in our skills. It's judgment time. Judges, are you ready to let the teams know how they did? Definitely. Let's bring in the teams. This is Debbie Constantino, world-renowned EVP specialist and investigator, and her lovely husband, Mark Constantino. And as always, my chief judge, Dave Schrader. Eerie Paranormal, before you present the judges and myself your evidence, there's three categories that you've been judged on. The first one is history. How well did they do on history, Mark? For me, it was absolutely the best part of your investigation. Every location you hit, you touched on the history of it, and it was very, very, very impressive. Teamwork. Mark, how'd they do? Um, I had some problems with your teamwork. When it all started out, I was really shocked that it seemed like you didn't have a game plan. Third category is technology. It was just unforgivable to me that you guys had loss of equipment and then you guys had places set up equipment and you forgot to push record on your audio recorder at one point. That was very disheartening as a judge to watch that go down. Evidence. The first piece of audio that we're going to show you is when Ben was in the attic with the POV by himself. Um, you're going to hear a voice and then about uh, 10 to 20 seconds later, you'll hear Ben talk. The voices that you hear are going to be completely different. Billy, can you bring up and play their first audio piece of evidence? Let's go. You guys make some noise over this back corner now? That's not, not Ben. That's not my what's, voice. What's not voice? That's Let's the go. first Let's one's go. not my voice. Let's go is not That's you. That's not me. Go. That no, is not, not him. him. Let me hear. The voice is completely different. Let's go. Go. Darcy, do you have a second piece of audio evidence? We do. We actually captured the second piece of audio in the toilet room. Were you able to make out what it says? <clears throat> Immediately. It's kind of embarrassing. Play it, Billy. Oh, sorry. I'm hearing a male and a female. I'm hearing a male in the beginning, and then I hear a female in the middle, and then I hear a male again at the end. <laughs> It's a compelling EVP, definitely a lot of tone. Do you have visual evidence? We do. What are we seeing here? Can you please point? The orb up in the left-hand corner. Okay. You'll see that the orb to the right over there is a dust particle. This is misshapen. Your second piece of visual evidence, what are we looking at? This is on the second floor. Uh, you'll see something come out of one cell linger around for a second, and then go into another. It, it does look like, like it's something legitimate. Very impressive. On the other hand, I have to totally disagree. You've got a light source at the end of the hall. You can see that light, and I think that you're getting a refraction from that light. Eerie Paranormal, thank you three very much. Steel Town Paranormal, please Thank step up. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Let's go. We watched the video, and we made a shocking discovery.
Weary Paranormal has delivered their evidence to the judges. Let's go is not you. That's not me. That is not him. Now it's Steel Town Paranormal's turn to show their evidence. How did they do using their history? I did like your use of history throughout the building. You guys managed to hit hit all of the hot spots. How do they do in teamwork? As far as the teamwork, Melanie, you're the leader. Uh, I think you stayed in control. I think you all worked really well together. It's obvious you know each other and have been doing it for a while. How do they do in technology? I thought it was freaking awesome how when the key moved, you heard the key, tried to reenact it. Let's see if this is what it was. Yeah, that was it. That was it. Cheers. I thought that was great. Chris, you got two clips of audio evidence that you can present to us. Yes, we do. Set up the first one. First audio clip uh, we actually caught in the uh, west cell block. Mm -hmm. And it seems that both of our audio clips actually were targeted toward our female investigators. Not a surprise. <laughs> uh, let's listen. Why don't you come on in the cell with me? Can you hear that? So you heard it. I yeah, heard we it. actually she... heard that. Yes. You heard this. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ooh, man. I wouldn't want to be yeah. sung that going to bed, you know? I just really like that you mimic it almost exactly how it sounded. Chris, do you have a second piece of audio evidence? Yes, we do. What is it? The uh, second piece of audio evidence actually targets Melanie. And what we believe it says is gang rape. Then a few seconds later, it says this girl, and then you're going to hear Melanie react as if, you know, she feels somebody touch her. Play it, Bill. Play There's it. a woman, a lady coming into your house. This is your wife. Does this bother you, knowing that spirits are saying oh, this? Oh, absolutely. Did you guys capture anything visually? Yes. There's two photos involved here. So you're going to see in this first picture, there's really nothing of interest there. And then in the second picture, we get this kind of a light anomaly that appears just out of nowhere. And the pictures are taken one right after another. Do you have a second piece of visual evidence? Yes, we do. What is it? You're going to see a shadow. It looks like a person sitting on the bench. Right there. Did you get You can actually, it looks like a person sitting there and kind of like hunching forward. And it looks like something, like the head or the shoulder area, something moves forward. Did you get Steel Town Paranormal, thank you very much. Some very interesting evidence. You may be dismissed at this time. We're going to be deliberating, and we'll call both of you teams back shortly. Thank you very much. In terms of history, teamwork, and technology, to me, they were just split. But that's me, and that's why you guys are here. Let's talk about what team got the best evidence that we just saw from using the history. History's got to go to Erie Paranormal. I agree. And I think that, uh, you know, Steele yeah. did a great job, but I think that they're they're just a little bit lower on the totem pole. I, I would have to agree. Teamwork, obviously the biggest thing that jumps out to me is Eerie Paranormal and how provocational they were. You want to lose your privileges? You clean up your cell too, shipmate. As a team, how do you think they did? I, I think they were really disorganized. Let's talk about Steel Town. I think Steel Town uh, did a really good job working as a team. Mm -hmm. I didn't see any arguments between them. I felt that they were well orchestrated. Teamwork, who wins? Steel Town. Dave? Steel Town. Mark? Steel Town. That brings us to technology, Eerie Paranormal. This is where I think the breakaway is. They lost a recorder. There was no follow-up. That was horrible. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with you, Dave. I mean, they lost their recorder. They couldn't use it for the evidence review. Let's jump to Steel Town. Uh, at once, I never saw them mishandle equipment. Not, Not at all. Once. No. And, and they, they avoided they every right. piece of equipment. They held it yeah. right. Yeah. They, they did the right thing. This is where the guy hung himself from that pipe there, so we should set that camera up. Okay. Now we're getting into the most important category, in which I actually weigh heavier. Steel Town, uh, the first EVP they presented. I didn't hear a voice. I heard a... 
And to me, that doesn't say gang rape, and that's paradelia. All right, let's talk about audio for uh, Eerie Paranormal. They submitted us with two different pieces of audio evidence. Go. What do you think about this? He said that he didn't say it, right. or that he doesn't remember saying it. What do you think? To me, it uh, did not sound like him. You know what I would love to do? I would love to look at that camera point right back to his face. Right. If yeah. he didn't say something, mm -hmm. I would have to give that's the best EVP yeah, so or disembodied voice. Clear. Right. Let's go. You guys were awesome. We really enjoyed watching both of your investigations. Dave, do you want to add anything? I got to tell you, every time we do this show, it becomes more amazing and amusing to me to watch the teams investigate. Uh, this time we had a very clear winner. With that said, the winner of Paranormal Challenge, Ohio State Reformatory, is... Steel Town Paranormal. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Congratulations. Eerie Paranormal presented an EVP. It said, let's go. Go. That's not me. That's not my voice. We watched the video. And we made a shocking discovery. Let's go. Oh. He said it. Go, go, go. go. No, I'm not down and out. I'm completely off. I was always taught if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all, so I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. We're the champions. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're thrilled. I mean, yeah. we put a lot of hard work into every investigation we do, and we stay focused, you do everything thoroughly, and I think the judges noticed that. We didn't just choose Steel Town Paranormal because of what we discovered with Eerie Paranormal and the EVP that they presented. When you're caught up in the moment, sometimes you don't always remember the little words you say, but I still strongly believe that they're a strong team, but congratulate Steel Town Paranormal. There it is. Another challenge, a new winning team. Where are we going to end up next? Keep watching.